my kind of place. It's just turning seven minutes to ten. This is Sunday Sequence with William Crawley. A church in England has banned a popular over-50s yoga group from its premises. The group's membership ranged from 30-year-olds to an 82-year-old. Some church leaders have expressed concern that an increasing number of Christians, both in Protestant and Catholic churches, are drawing on yoga as a means of relaxation, meditation and stress relief. They're questioning whether yoga is even compatible with Christian belief. Well, is it? Peter Gilligan is author of What is Tai Chi? Cecil Andrews is the founder of Take Heed Ministries. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, Cecil, is it compatible? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, Peter Anderson, a Christian evangelist, wrote in his book Satan Snare, Yoga is part and parcel of Hinduism with occult roots, a no-go area for Christians. And the Hindu Academy confirmed that yoga is most definitely a religion, and they're trying to unite our individual soul, Atman, with the great universal soul, Brahman. So they're teaching a philosophy that is incompatible with Christianity. Peter Gilligan, is this Hinduism by the back door? Um, well, it could be seen that way. Um, to be honest, uh, my tradition is Chinese rather than uh, Indian, and I practice Tai Chi Chen. Um, and that's a way of self-cultivation, and yoga has also been described as a way of self-cultivation. And, you know, what do you mean by self-cultivation? I mean, presumably self-cultivation means being the best human being you can possibly be. What you do with that human being is presumably up to you. We have an image of what people do physically in yoga. Mm -hmm. That's very common. What is at work spiritually or intellectually? Uh, to be brutal in your average, you know, happy housewife yoga class, probably almost nothing. Um, it's mostly, as my, as my understanding of Hatha Yoga goes, um, just the, 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 the focusing of the mind on the body in order to remove any blockages or stresses. Could I just add that uh, the lady in England who promotes yoga, she says of Hatha Yoga that it's simply a preparation for meditation and the accompanying possibility of enlightenment. This enlightenment is self-realization, uh, which they say is not only human beings, but all living entities are parts and parcels of God. This is pantheism, pure Hinduism, and the uh, Hatha Yoga, the tying yourself in knots in a leotard, is simply the precursor to getting you into the heart and soul of yoga, which is meditation, which is altering your state of consciousness, hoping that you'll have some spiritual enlightenment, which will be an occultic experience. So definitely Christians should have nothing to do with it. Cecil, what of those Christians who are, I mean, committed Christians who take part in the yoga class, perhaps at their local gym, for fitness purposes or relaxation purposes, and they say, I have never encountered an idea that challenged any of my personal beliefs. I still believe in the, the Lordship of Christ. This helps me, in fact, to focus more attentively when I'm praying and meditating on the image of Christ. There's nothing wrong with doing physical exercises. The problem is that every yogi who teaches yoga, they are seeking to ingratiate you into the way of yoga, which is Hinduism, they're putting forward a philosophy. It's not just a keep fit class. Uh, it's the precursor. Once they've gone through the asanas, the postures, they'll take you to the breathing exercises. Then they'll take you to the meditation. And that can introduce you to ESP experiences, out-of-body experiences, tremors, spasms, violence, shaking and twisting. This is what's down the line, but they won't tell you everything up front. Peter Gilligan? Well, I mean, I have seen in certain evangelical ceremonies tremors, twisting, violence, shaking. I agree with you. Sadly, the so-called Toronto blessing was no blessing of God. It was, in fact, an occultic experience, experiencing kundalini, serpent power. That was exactly the same thing as you find in Hinduism and other Eastern religious experiences. Peter? Um, well, I'm sure that the, the people who were practicing the Toronto Blessing would not be happy to be told that they were clone, kundalini yogis. They were uh, using the same exact techniques. Rodney Hard Brown would go up to people, put his hand on their forehead, which is a chakra point. He would say to people, stop praying. In other words, he wanted them to go into a passive state where their mind was emptied. Well, I've, I've certainly seen the hand on the head being used quite regularly 
by numerous evangelical preachers, particularly the American preachers. And within my tradition, this is a well-known trick. I mean, it's a con. A I mean, it's, it's easily done. Let's, 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 let's hear Peter make the point first. Sorry, Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I mean, there, there are various games that can be played with people. And such manipulations, in my view, in my tradition, are thoroughly and profoundly immoral. Um, and I have, I have, and other colleagues of mine have observed behaviour amongst certain Christian ministers, admittedly practised perhaps in total ignorance, mm. which are indistinguishable from some of these tricks that we're aware We've of. We've got two minutes left, Cecil. Let's yep. bring it right back to, to yoga. Keep the focus on yoga. Yep. A um, former guru called Ravi Maharaj, who wrote his book, Death of a Guru, said before he became a Christian, I knew no other way to search for God than through yoga. And he had a power called the Shakti Pat, where he could zap people in the same way that Benny Hinn, for instance, can supposedly zap people. It's an occultic power. Uh, how can you tell that an apra is occultic, and what exactly do you mean by occultic? The word occult means hidden, hidden power, hidden knowledge. The Holy Spirit who indwells true Christians gives them discernment that they can recognize the false and the true. But Cecil, what about the possibility for manipulation, the potential for man manipulation that is there in every public gathering, with, even with an ordinary preacher speaking. You can manipulate people with pauses and silences and tones of voice and textures in your, in your speech. Oh yeah, Rick Warren practices that because he used to work in the movie business and he knew how to manipulate these things. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God. He does not use emotionalism. Peter Gillingham, last point on yoga. What is the benefit of yoga for you? Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's a, a study just recently published uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine, so it's talking about Tai Chi um, and its effectiveness in treating uh, fibromyalgia. Tai Chi and both yoga have been shown to be extremely effective in the treatment of arthritis, uh, osteoporosis. There was a very famous study conducted in Canada uh, particularly with the use of Tai Chi in the elderly, and it's protective against falls. When people fall, they don't do as much damage. I think there's a profound amount of health benefits that you're completely ignoring. Peter Gilligan and Cecil Andrews, many thanks to you both. It's 10 o'clock. On 92 to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave, this is BBC Radio 1 Station.